Hi folks, Florida Man here. Since we already have an Alliance video dedicated to covering the alliance between England and France, and a Western Triple video, it seems only fair that we cover the other two permutations of the Western powers. Today, we're discussing the alliance between England and Germany, another of the most common alliances in the game. We'll discuss how this alliance works, what the pros and cons of this alliance are, how long it typically lasts, and whom it benefits most in execution. The Anglo-German alliance is, as the name suggests, an alliance between England and Germany. In order to be maximally effective, you should begin the game with this alliance, not just pick it up somewhere along the way. England should find its way into the Channel and the Irish Sea pretty quickly, while Germany should find its way into Burgundy as soon as possible, and the two of them should launch a well-planned invasion of France, before it's obvious that they're working together. Using diplomatic smokescreens to conceal cooperation is extremely valuable in this early stage of the alliance, because frequently, Russia will want to sabotage the Anglo-German alliance if Russia knows it exists, and France can turtle up and defend itself for quite a while if it's obvious that England and Germany are working together. As England or Germany, I frequently also favor getting Italy involved on my behalf, which can provide critical distraction for France at a key moment. A common move by the Germans in this alliance is to bounce Russia out of Sweden in 1901, because Russia, like France, is a natural enemy of the Anglo-German alliance. Usually, the alliance isn't executed perfectly, and it will take a bit longer than you'd like to eliminate France, but when you do defeat the French, there are six juicy centers to divide between yourselves and possibly Italy, which makes it extremely rewarding to make that attack on France early on. England becomes very secure in its corner, while Germany defeats one of its two early threats as a result of this, and they usually go after Russia next, allowing England to monopolize the northwest corner and Germany to become a massive central power. Sometime around the time Russia is defeated, the alliance frequently breaks down because the players have to make a choice between devoting forces to expanding to the south or turning on each other. And although expanding south actually offers both of them a better opportunity at solo, most of the time, it's difficult to give up the opportunity to defeat your early ally and absorb those nearby centers, knowing that opportunity may never be as good again, and that your ally might turn on you before you can find the chance to turn on them. There are a lot of respected diplomacy authorities, like Richard Sharp, who have endorsed the Anglo-German alliance as a better option for England than working with France. I tend to agree that France is too naval and has too much growth potential, and too much incentive and capacity to stab England for my liking. I often find it better to ally with the generally land-bound German, assuming that Germany is willing to accept the fate of being a land power, rather than trying to find excuses to build unnecessary and unwanted fleets. The truth is, though, that regardless of which western power you are, a skilled player will find or make opportunities to stab their initial ally. So although I think England is the biggest beneficiary of this alliance, and Germany is only the second largest beneficiary, this is almost making a distinction without a difference in this case, because either one can come out on top almost equally easily when they work together. The fact that both powers benefit so nearly equally to each other is a reason why this alliance, like the Entente, can last a long time. It's very dependent on the players, but in many cases I would say this alliance can outlast the typical duration of the Entente, because it can be a daunting task to try to stab your ally in this alliance, assuming that you're both growing, and that the other isn't leaving obvious openings. So there's no reason this alliance can't last until the end, except that there are no natural stalemate lines to keep the players honest, which is a common problem for many alliances. If the Anglo-German alliance does break down, I typically expect the winner of the fight to be whoever strikes first, assuming the stabber actually has a plan and sufficient resources to make the stab happen. The other powers that tend to benefit from this alliance might be Turkey, Italy, and or Austria in that order. Turkey benefits from how much this alliance weakens Russia, and from the fact that Turkey is far away from the Anglo-German alliance, so Turkey will be the last one to be attacked. If the Turk plays his cards right, there's no reason he shouldn't be the third power in a draw with France and England. And in fact, on play diplomacy, a draw between England, Germany, and Turkey is the statistically most common three-power draw that includes England and Germany. Italy benefits from France being besieged early, but Italy really mainly benefits if Italy gets some French centers. If the only result of France being taken out is that England invades the Mediterranean instead of France, then Italy is harmed by the alliance between England and Germany almost as much as France and Russia are. Austria can potentially benefit from the Anglo-German alliance, but only indirectly, because the reality is that while Russia will be weakened, which can sometimes help create a dominant Austrian, Austria risks being the next target for Germany, if the Anglo-German alliance is genuinely a close-knit one. In fact, 
Austria is the most logical target for Germany if England and Germany are still friendly after Russia falls. So Austria can sometimes end up being a big loser when the Anglo-German alliance emerges. The biggest losers are France and Russia, in that order, because that's the order in which the Anglo-German alliance typically eliminates these enemies. If the Anglo-German alliance is genuinely firm and the players know what they're doing, they should overwhelm France within three years of the game beginning and finish France off within four or five years. And by the time France is dead, they should also have taken control of Scandinavia and possibly St. Petersburg. The latter sequence of events is quite bad for Russia, naturally, since it cuts off a possible avenue of expansion and means that Russia's days are most likely numbered. To counter this, France needs to try and get both Russia and Austria to help him out, and Italy to be at least neutral, while Russia needs to be proactive in the north or very successful in the south to counteract the effects of this inherently anti-Russian alliance. I hope you enjoyed this alliance overview and found it helpful. If so, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and check out more Florida Man Diplomacy videos. And please join me in thanking the folks whose names are now on screen, who have gone above and beyond to support the channel by either contributing to my Patreon or writing subtitles. Feel free to join them in providing that extra support. We also appreciate comments which boost the videos in the algorithm and make it more likely that fellow Diplomacy fans will discover Florida Man Diplomacy. Until next time, Florida Man out.